go-to dance move. I don't really have a go-to dance move. I think I just kind of, I don't know. I just like do what I feel, do what I feel. Let's talk about Brat and what made Brat so successful. And I think when talking about Brat and the album ro rollout, we kind of have to look back a little bit on what album rollouts really consisted of. And being a Gen Z millennial cusp kind of person, I kind of got the like start days of music being on the internet. And I miss the MySpace days a little bit, but for me, me discovering music was iTunes. And usually you would have to go on iTunes, find um, a see if a single is coming out, and then maybe you go on YouTube and you look up a music video for that single. Then three months later, you can see uh, that this person has like a track one through track 12, kind of like how it is on Spotify. But like there was just like waiting for that. I mean, you had certain sites, like especially in the hip hop realms, you had hot hip hop news or hot hip hop daily. I forget the message for them for that. But besides MySpace, you didn't really have anything else besides iTunes that described like a album rollout. And then we get into social media and album rollouts are literally a defining moment where your album is going to do well or it could flop. Album rollouts are usually the months preceding an album that kind of build, especially for pop stars, they build up this era. So um, it's like a very either like an emotional vibe to the album. So there'll be like a lot of like dimly shot photos, like uh, going to magazine shoots. The f they're always very serene or calm. Or maybe it's like a very hyper poppy album or very upbeat album. So there's a lot of colors. There's a lot of like partying and stuff like that. Very, you kind of have to, when it comes to albums now, you have to give some kind of feeling to that album because that, I mean, whenever there's feelings towards everything, we gravitate towards them. We want to feel something when we, when we intake any kind of art. And recently, before I guess we get into Brat, uh, I guess two album rollouts that have kind of had these eras are um, obviously Beyonce's Cowboy Carter with like cowboy themes, Western themes, and Nicki Minaj's Gag City, which created this whole fake AI-generated city that led up to the album that honestly was carrying that album. Let's enter Brat and Charlie XCX. So by now, if you are on the internet, you know who Charlie XCX is. She's this British Indian pop star who uh, got her start in the rave kind of scene in London, uh, traveling around. Apparently her parents would you know, take her to these raves at a very young age, and she had this love for music. and. With Charlie XCX, she, it's funny her how she has come up because she's had these very pop star moments with like the fancy Exelia song or the Icona Pop uh, record. And those, you know, you think those would catapult her into this pop star uh, area where every, where she'd be like a household name. But that kind of hasn't happened. But the projects that she has released just keep getting better and better and that's like the best sign of an artist and with charlie her her last record crash uh there wasn't that much of a rollout and i guess there's a little bit of an asterisk there because this was an album that kind of that she described in certain interviews as a sellout album it was very pop classic pop it was very I'm going to get some hard hitting or some very not hard hitting features, but more so just popular features. And it's going to stream well, give the record what they want. She can get out of this record contract and kind of have more creative control. I mean, she's Charlie XCX. She does still have a name, even though she hasn't, you know, reached the height of like a Taylor um, or a Beyonce, which arguably to say now, but this is post brat, obviously. Um, but the rollout, it, it didn't do too much. It was just a couple TikToks here and there. I mean, it, you, you have this like car crash theme, which obviously it's a meme with Charlie XCX, like the girl loves cars, vroom, vroom, literally. There's this uh, 
there's this notes app photo where it's like when she mentions a car and every in a in an album and every album has like 10 seconds into it 20 seconds into it which is just it's hilarious but going into brat i was ex- i wasn't expecting anything crazy but um when the cover dropped uh, it it was it was just very simple. Obviously, you all have seen the Brat cover now. It's just Brat in a simple font and this neon green background, which comes I will elaborate on later. But that comes to be so important to this whole album rollout and how people gravitate towards it. And uh, Brat, uh, I was looking when doing a little bit of research for this. I was looking at interviews and there was a uk interview and charlie says she wanted this album to be very communicative she wanted it to bring people together and you know create this dialogue within people and i think you know looking back on it she absolutely did and to start the album rollout she had stan twitter pages of charlie xcx come to a listening party and just listen to the album in full so the album has been done at the start of the rollout and you know everyone loved it they were talking there was like all this hype is there club bangers is it like there's some oats uh sophie who passed away uh a year or two ago that really influenced her so there's a lot of mystique with this album and uh once that happened there was a lot of buzz for it and it just kind of it was kind of everyone's back of their minds and um we don't hear anything until boiler room so boiler room happens and it's this big event in bushwick everyone wants to go it's charlie xcx she's doing a dj dj set with easy fun who is a frequent collaborator with charlie xcx so it's going to be a good time and uh when this happens uh, a single is released around the same time called von dutch very hard hitting like we kind of expected and um just a very good you know song overall but this boiler room set brings out two very interesting and very like beloved characters especially by the gay community and that's addison ray who's like becoming this like pop star diva in her own right and julia fox who is like just like the epitome of being like that girl like that woman like she is just like she's like what a lot of people aspire to be i mean i have a lot of friends in my and i'm in my mid-20s like they want to be julia fox so Two women that really, you know, the gay community latch on, a lot of women latch on to as like role models, and they show up, and we realize that Addison Ray is going to be on a remix. And through this time, we realize that Addison Ray is going to be, uh, or Addison Ray and Charlie are really good friends. And I think that's just like something you don't see within pop. And it's funny how this theme of friendship kind of carries on throughout the album um and we see julia fox she releases a song there it's just like dude it's just like no one cares everyone's having a great time it seems like everyone that went there had a great time so we get that boiler room set so after the boiler room set we get two more singles back to back in club classics which are really good songs but they're just singles that you put out there they're they're they are very single oriented the same repetitive chorus very minimal lyrics, but it gets your heart rate going. You can play them in the club. And that's so important when you are trying to have this hard hitting club records, you need stuff that can just play in the club. So I thought that was really cool. And then we get um, the brat wall. So this brat wall is like such a captivating idea. It's just, they painted a wall in Bushwick, which, you know, everyone in Bushwick looks like mustache, mullet, and we get on TikTok and we see that Charlie XCX is live. It's just this brat wall. And there's just people standing in front of it. There's a girl that wipes her uh, feces on it, which is wild. And it becomes this like symbol and it just becomes this meme automatically. And that's where the cover, where it's almost like less is more. You have this neon green cover that just says brat. And brat is just like, with like the Y2K movement and like literally referring to like Bratz dolls, Bratz like being a brat, it could refer to anything. But just the simplicity of that neon green album cover, you can transform it into so many different things. And we see that throughout the album cover. I saw, I've seen like 
uh, coach bags that are iridescent that's not iridescent, but like see-through, uh, that have brat on them. I've seen cell phone covers, people get tattoos, people get tramp stamps. Like it's become this, uh, brat, just tattooing brat on you or just symbol, like this is symbolizing, like feeling free, not caring, just having a great summer this summer, bringing back that very, like, like empowering vibe of like taking back, uh your life and kind of freeing yourself from all these uh chains of like uh what you know what you have to achieve your job you know pressure from family and yeah it's just i thought that was something that really when charlie referencing charlie wanting this album to be communicative i mean the memes were piling in the last three days i couldn't get away from the brat memes especially on twitter so we get after the brat wall, we get 360, and 360 is another uh, kind of like it's a little bit more of a poppier song, but it's still really good, uh, short and sweet. But the music video is where uh, I think she really just like the detail to this album rollout was so so good. So we see the 360 music video, and we see some like really cool cameos, like. Rachel Sennett, uh, there's Salem Mitchell, there is uh, Chloe Cherry from Euphoria, and Julia Fox, and uh, they're just like, okay, those are great people, and then we get into it, and we see like, people from TikTok that we see every day, like Alex Gassani, uh, who's now like a TikToker term model, we see Blizzy McGuire, who's like this internet famous celebrity, she's one of the funnier people on TikTok. And we see these people and we're just like, she knows us, she gets us. Like, there's a lot of people who are fans of Charlie that don't get out that much. And like people like Lizzie McGuire and Alex Kasani are people that are like their friends. Like they have this parasocial relationship with them. So when when you see your favorite pop star recognize these people, you're like, oh, like I feel like validated. And that's something that a lot of and with Charlie's fan base being mostly gay, queer, trans, non binary under that umbrella. It's just, it's really good to see that she's like tapping into like what her fans align with and who's popular, who kind of intersects Charlie XCX's music and uh, how the internet creates this bubble. And I think she did a excellent job with that music video, even though a lot of people, I think after the fact, it just kind of thought, oh, it's very cameo. I mean, I mean you have Chloe uh, 770 from like the kids movie in there. Like that's wild to have. And just even more attention to detail with more remixes. And you see um, the 360 remix with Robin and Young Lean. Personally, I am a Young Lean stan. I've been listening to Young Lean since like 2013. I was shocked when I saw this crossover. I guess shocked that they would actually put music together, but they have been friends for a while. I mean, I feel like everyone in Europe that has some kind of uh, celebrity status kind of knows each other. Um, and then putting Robin and Young Lean on the same song, it's just like these two intersections of like 40 year old gays and 20 year old drainers. I'm like how Charlie XCX is literally the only artist that can have those two worlds collide. I just thought that was hilarious and just so uh, ingenious. Only if Playboy Cardi is on a remix record next. That's the only way she can top that. If Playboy Cardi or like King Carson or Netspin is on it, then I would go insane. But yeah, I think this is just how you just like perfect an album rollout. You just have to tap into your fans and really do the research. Like what do they want? And, and then you can kind of turn it to your own thing. Like I think Brat was all about the club records and there was some, tri there's a, so I to uh, Sophie, that tribute on there is just beautiful. And, um, you know, people just gravitated towards it. I mean, people are talking about Brat Summer, how it's just like cigarettes, Americanos, Monsters, Red Bulls, partying till 3 a.m. And like, that's like, that was like pre pandemic life where like the summer you'd go out every week and every weekend. And I think we lost that through the pandemic, which is obviously a whole nother set of issues but now we're coming out of that and we can like let loose a little bit and like do the things we love and do that and make mistakes and have this like really cool summer so it's june 22nd today that i'm recording this and one of the most i guess 
uh, mind-boggling things that has happened is Girl So Confusing. So this is a record that was apparently about Lord. Uh, it's just about Charlie and Lord's relationship, how like she doesn't get um, – lord's vibe it seems like you know they want to hang out and then that nothing happens and like they just can't really connect there's just this big disconnect whenever they hang out and they can't really make music but her fans want it lord's fans want it and then the craziest thing i've honestly like ever seen in music is the person she's referencing to like that she's kind of dissing we all thought it was a diss track lord comes on to the remix record and that is such a beautiful thing to do in the music industry because you you we always look for these like rivalries and we have these like you know it's like meg and nikki or meg and party or um it's like kendrick and drake and it's like we're always looking for opposition and like this is just like coming together and like hey like i was not in the best headspace and like this is how we need to interact as humans and communicate we need to be a little bit more forgiving and like it was just such a beautiful show of um, how being kind, killing, not killing them with kindness, because I don't think there was ever like, we want to get each other out of our lives. But I mean, even with, uh, even Maria, Marina and the Diamonds and Charlie, they had their falling out with like something, it seemed pretty, just very small falling out over like, some kind of marketing campaign and they were like they always came up together and now they're resolving their issues it seems like on social media so it's just such a beautiful thing to see people come together it's so refreshing especially in the music industry where everything is so competitive and so volatile between these artists but yeah that's kind of my thoughts on this whole rollout i think it's one of the better rollouts i've seen in the last couple of years i think artists really need to connect with their fan bases more as they grow as artists and figure and really just, you know, surround themselves with people that kind of come from those areas. I mean, you see people like uh, Terrence O'Connor, who does, I guess it does a lot of the marketing and photography. I mean, he, I, I first saw him through his uh, boyfriend Benito when he was doing skits and he was always like referencing Charlie and doing stuff like that. So he like knows and been on the internet uh, you have like people like Rachel Sennett that were around her a lot that the internet loves her in that uh, movie bodies 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 so I think this is just I guess to sum it all up is just a call to other artists like listen to your fans and see what they want and like go and like maybe change up your you know your music and see how that you know sits with your fans because at the end of the day your fans are your most important you know, people, they're the ones streaming, buying the merches, buying the 12 different vinyl variants that, you know, Miss Taylor Swift does. I always got to jab Taylor Swift. But yeah, I think it's just an amazing, it was just amazing rollout. And I think we will get a remix album. I, I think Shy Girl is going to be on the 365 record, which is such a good record in its own right. I mean, I get why it's rated one of the highest albums ever. It's just so, so good. So good. But yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's my first YouTube video. So it's probably going to be one of the worst videos you ever see, but we'll get better. I have a video about Chapel Roan coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'll see you next week.